Greens at Eastern Michigan on Saturday afternoon. Coach, I'll ask, you want to make any kind of statement? Or, all right, we'll just take questions. Has the health of any of your team improved with uh, three or four days off? We'll see as uh, we get through the last couple of days of prep for Eastern. Uh, we've had Lauren Prohaska has been in a protective boot since uh, the game on Saturday and trying to keep her off um, her foot as much as possible. Uh, we are anticipating for her to practice for the first time today a little bit and uh, see how she feels. I think the rest is done. Uh, some of the other players are uh, good um, to help with uh, the bumps and bruises that go along at this time of the year for them. Uh, but uh, I don't know if we're ever going to be completely healthy, but uh, certainly with the exception of Lauren, I think that, that this week is going to help a lot of our players. And which foot is it? That's a good question. Um, I don't get that very often, so thank you. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to tell you wrong. Okay. I'll look down at the boot and be able to tell you when I see her in a little bit here. What's the situation with her foot then that, that causes this boot? <clears throat> well, it's, um, I'm, I'm certainly not a doctor, but it, it's, we don't want uh, it to turn into a stress fracture in her foot. It's on her upper foot. Um, it is kind of more of a stress reaction and uh, a situation that's just going to take time to heal. And we don't have, obviously, a lot of time in practice. So trying to keep her weight and being in a you know, weight-bearing boot where it, it protects her that outside of basketball activities, trying to keep her off of the foot as much as possible now for the rest of the season is kind of uh, the practice that we have in place. When did this occur? I don't know if there's a specific point in, in a game that we can really say that it happened, um, but certainly, without question, this has been going on for three plus weeks now. Uh, we've had Lauren uh, very <coughs> few full practices over the last three weeks, and we've tried to, you know, manage it, manage the pain, manage uh, her minutes practiced so we could get her through games. But I, I think that's why you see that she had some games that were subpar in, in, in Lauren's uh, case um, and certainly was dealing through trying to play through this injury and she's never complained about it and she's a warrior and uh, and it was nice to see her uh, last home game against Ball State put together a nice game because I, I know she's hurting but uh, at least it gives her some confidence that she can step back up and have good games. <clears throat> you mentioned that you're hoping to have her for her first practice today. Can you kind of walk us through what your practice schedule was since the game Saturday? We were off Sunday and Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday was uh, a short uh, practice that concentrated <coughs> a significant amount on offense and shooting, mm -hmm. and so more of a, uh, a shooting practice or an offensive-minded practice. Yesterday we were uh, tip back to a typical practice, um, length and intensity, uh, working on both ends of the floor, offense and dis defensively, and subtly preparing for Eastern without um, dedicating an entire practice to Eastern. Today will be a very, very hard prep day for <coughs> Eastern and continue to what we want to add uh, down the stretch run to our own playbook and, and what we need to get better at. Okay, so, so she had missed two practices coming into today then? She did not practice Tuesday or Wednesday. And today we will give her a little bit of go in half-court activity only and, uh, and see how she does in some half-court activity. When she's out in practice and if you do do anything with the starters and drills like that, who fills in for her in the starting lineup then? Uh, we put Jess Slagle into that role and, uh, and play her at the wing and uh, just kind of manufacture different scenarios and different lineups um, that we potentially would have during games with foul trouble and or injuries. So, but just Legos filled in, if you per se, that starting group, that five. Will you talk a little bit also, uh, Tracy Pontius's numbers in terms of minutes have gone down and you've talked a couple of times about um, trying to get minutes out of other people to give her rest. What's what's her status right right now? 
You know, Tracy uh, <clears throat> doesn't have an injury that limits her in, in games, um, per se, that we have to hold her out, but she's got a significant um, knee contusion bruise. Um, her knee and hamstring has bothered her um, the last few weeks of conference play, and, and she's been significantly affected by it with her speed and her ability to change pace and, and, and <coughs> change direction. And uh, it's the lateral quickness that it has really bothered her through this, uh, this knee contusion. She tweaked her knee again in practice uh, the Thursday after we were stuck in DeKalb in Northern Illinois. And so she's playing through it, but certainly is not near 100%. And I think that anyone who's watched Tracy through the years can see where she's affected most is she's lost the step uh, of quickness and explosiveness. And so it's hurting her at the offensive end, trying to get the penetration that we require out of our offensive um, sets. And certainly um, her lateral quickness has been affected guarding the quick athletic guards in our league over the last couple of weeks. How about Eastern? Uh, a fantastic team. Um, they have a great backcourt, and their three starting guards are tremendous. Um, Cassie Schrock is really the key to their program, is, is playing the point guard position with a high school teammate of Jen Ewell from Wadsworth, Ohio. And uh, she's third in the league right now in, in MAC play and scoring. She leads the league in minutes played in MAC play. She's in the top five in assists. She's really the engine that makes it go. She gets to the foul line 10 times a game from the point guard position, showing you that she's in attack mode every time down the floor. And so she is where you start your conversation on how to defend them. But also Tavlin James is fourth in the league in MAC play and scoring. So they have the three and fourth best MAC scores in the conference. So they're a great one-two punch at the point and two position. So um, they take about 70% of their shots from their starting three guards. And so their, their post players do a good job setting screens for them. Uh, do a great job on the offensive glass, uh, but they are going to be very, very guard heavy when it comes to attempted shots. They got great quickness. Uh, they're in the top ten in the nation in steals, so they score a lot of points off turnovers. So you've got to keep your turnovers low, or it's just a layup drill for them at the other end. And every game you watch when they play against MAC team, it's layup after layup off of turnovers. So you've really got to be able to control your turnovers against them to be able to handle them. But um, probably, starting lineup-wise, probably the fastest team in the league. So they give you problems with their athleticism and great, and great uh, guard court. And with all that said, they lead the league in offensive rebounding. So their guards are shooting it, and their posts are going to get in it when they don't make them. So um, legitimate team that's fighting for second place. And uh, it, it's a really, really tough test for us. Kurt, they also, they're... Offense is very up tempo. They like to push misses, makes in every situation. Is that given the the health situation? Is that a, make that a bigger concern or just a concern as it sits? Tempo is a big word for this game because they are really <coughs> fast and they want to play up tempo. Well, we want to play up tempo also and look for early offense, but they can make you play at a helter skelter pace, and that's when they start to turn you over and it leads directly to easy runouts and layups in transition for them. So we will run with them. We want to play up tempo, but we've got to play at a pace where we can be successful and not a helter skelter where it leads to turnovers and easy layups for them. So finding that, that BG pace is a big story of the game. They're faster than us, but we, we do play um, well when we have uh, the right tempo. They, you want to play fast, they want to play faster. Correct. So. I guess the assignment on Schrock. <clears throat> well, we're going to give her different looks, and I think you have to. Uh, when you watch other teams play them, uh, you watch them do a good job of posting her up against small guards. Uh, so then you watch other teams put big win wings on them, and she takes them to the basket and gets layups or, or to the foul line. But I think that's the right approach. I think if you, you give the same defender, Cassie, 
for 35 minutes of the game, she's going to make adjustments. The coaching staff's going to make adjustments. So in man-to-man, -man, we're going to have to give her different looks. In zone, um, they do a really nice job putting her in the middle of zone offenses and let her attack against post players. And we've got to be able to cover that up also in guard her. So I guess the key is not letting her find that comfort zone. And, and in doing so, like most teams, we're going to have to put different people on her throughout the night. Kurt, you've mentioned we've talked about Prohaska Pontius. Is there anyone else on the roster who is fighting through injuries or illness or something that might limit them for this weekend or down the road? Nothing that's <laughs> limiting anyone. We've, you know, we've gone through bouts and stretches recently of the flu bug, but I think everyone is turning the corner with that. Um, Kelly Zerker has fought uh, a significant uh, back injury, back pain over the last month, but you know she she's also still able to go and, and a, a option for us off the bench. Maggie Hennigan has dealt all year with plantar fasciitis and and at times looks like she can't take another step and then has weeks at a time where uh, she seems to be doing well and and Maggie just manages her pain. Uh, and does the best she can with her injury. And uh, it, it, on game days, it, it hasn't <coughs> limited her to the point where we've really had to take her out because of that. So overall, with the exception of our two stars, um, at this time of the year, you have your typical aches and pains. But it, it's, it's, uh, it's concerning when your two stars are the ones that are beat up the most. To what degree do those injuries, do you think, have a feel, have a direct result in kind of this tough stretch that you had, guys have had as a team? Well, I think it's a huge contributor. It, one, we haven't been able to hit our stride and start to peak yet because you just don't have them in the amount of reps in practice uh, and then able to do some of the things they're typically able to do in games. And so we, we're learning to play with them not at 100%. And, uh, and certainly we still have some room to grow in that area. but. We have to understand that they may never be 100% for the rest of their career, and we still want to peak and play better at the, <coughs> at the MAC tournament. So we're, we're still trying to figure out what's best, how we can tweak things a little bit here or there to allow us to come play competitive basketball and still fight for what we believe is still a wide open race in the East Division Championship. Talk about that wide open race in the East. Is it unique for? You as a coach looking at the past couple of years, there's been one or two teams maybe that are still within, but the past couple of years at this point, you guys have pretty much been, not guaranteed, but look like you're going to be in the top two teams at least in that division. Interesting to see um, three or four teams now that could easily, at any point, just two games you know, swing by or skid by someone, easily change everything. Yeah, the East race is absolutely up for grabs. Buffalo might be playing the best of anyone in the East, and they're sitting there looming a game behind. Now, they they got beat by both Kent and us the first time around, so we both have tiebreakers on them. But, you know, they're very much in striking distance one game back. And then Kent State, uh, you know, has five senior starters. And so this is the stretch that they've been working so hard for. So, you know, they're going to be ready for this last six games. It should be a very, very interesting race down the stretch. I think the hard part of it is, is that right now, you have six teams playing for four bid, four buys, and everyone wants to try to stay out of that five and six hole because it's so much harder to win the MAC tournament trying to win four straight games than it is three straight games. So it will be a very, very interesting race to try to stay in that top four. You really want to try to stay out of that five or six hole if you can and, and not have to play in the prelim round of the MAC tournament.